What's up folks, I'm Dev, and welcome to Tiger Knight Samurai School. Okay, so Tiger Knight is a really fun game, but I can see it could be a little bit difficult for some people to get their heads around. There's a lot to it, so I thought I'd break it down step by step and give you guys a hand in how to get started. So first of all, when you log into the game, it's going to put you through a number of tutorials. There's three in total. It'll just give you an idea of how to play, how everything works. Once you've done that, my first recommendation would be go into the training menu. Here you're going to find a number of different challenges. What the challenges are going to do is just kind of teach you the different mechanics of, of how the gameplay works, how the combat works. And the better scores you get on this, you're going to get better rewards. Plus you also get a lot of very interesting translations. Hold the Practrometer Transverse Mark Cut Stakes. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. So when you finish your training, you'll probably be looking at a screen like this. You can actually just close this window by clicking in the top. What I'm going to do is just do a quick rundown of what's on the screen. So starting from the top left and working down, first of all you've got your money. Now this is the copper, this is what you're going to use to buy new things. Then you've got your gold. Now gold is essentially the purchased money that you can buy from the in-game store. Then you have your prestige. This is technically XP points. This is what you use to unlock new items. And then finally the exploit. You get this from PvP matches. This can actually unlock sort of specialised items that you wouldn't normally get in the marketplace. You've got the VIP button. This is what you would click if you were looking to upgrade your account. Then we have the storage, which is all your equipment and your gear. Then there's the adjutant, which is technically your lieutenant. That's how you're going to be upgrading and buying new lieutenants. We have the upgrade. This is where you're going to be upgrading your troops as well as unlocking new gear for your character. We have the main page button. This will bring up the main page that we closed before and again you can just get rid of that with the top corner. Underneath that there's the drop down which will select what kind of matches you're going to be playing. At the moment you will just have competition level 1 unlocked but you will unlock more as you progress. We've got the market. This is where you're going to go to buy any new equipment. We've got the lead tab. This is essentially a guilds tab. We have the rankings tab where you can see how you match up against other players. Then we've got the events tab which is basically a way that you can just get daily rewards for logging in. It'll let you know about anything that's happening in the game. Next up is the missions tab. This is where you're going to do daily missions and things to get new items. You can change the background of your menu just by clicking on this button here. There is an inbuilt guide which you can click on the question mark here. It can be a little bit difficult to understand so that's why I'm making this video. On the left hand side of the screen here you're going to see your character. Select your character and see all of your stats, achievements, what you've done in your career and also any replays that you may have saved. Underneath your character you have your lieutenant. You can upgrade and purchase new lieutenants from the adjutant menu. In the bottom left of your screen you're going to find the chat box and then finally we have the troop menu across the bottom of the screen. When you're going into battle you get to pick a troop that you're going to take with you as well as a lieutenant. So this is where you would select what troop you're going to be taking from this menu. There's a lot to this but I will be going over this later on in the video. So at this point my advice would be to go to the main page and just play. This will give you an idea of how the game runs, how your character moves, everything like this. Just before you go ahead and start buying new equipment or certain types of troops just so you can get an idea of, of what the game is like. So now that you've had a little taste of battle, the next thing I'm going to do is go through the upgrades menu. In the upgrade menu is where you're going to find all of your troops and this is how you're going to unlock new weapons and gear for your character. You're going to find there's three available families at the moment, Wei, Shu and Wu. There is a Rome faction but that is coming soon. You'll find that each faction has its own specialities, abilities, weapons and equipment so depending on your playstyle you're going to have to have a look through and see which faction is going to be best suited for you. Personally I've decided to go for the Wu faction, that's just the character that I've made as well so it all lines up nicely. So when you have a faction selected, if you click on the troops you'll find that you have a troop commander as well as the troops themselves. You can spend your experience points to unlock new equipment and weapons for your troop. 
So for example, if I wanted to unlock the large wooden pike for my militia, I would use 120 experience points, which would unlock it. And then I can purchase it for the troop and I can also purchase it for myself. You can also unlock upgrades such as exercise. This will give them extra 10% health. Once you've reached the end of the tech tree, you can unlock a superior set of troops, which will then continue on through unlocking more gear and more equipment for yourself. So I'd recommend that you have a good look through all the different factions and see what kind of weapons and armor they unlock for you just to see what kind of things that you're going to have as a character yourself. One thing I would note is that I wouldn't worry about the horses, you unlock a horse at level 5 automatically. As you progress further through the factions, like I have on Wu, at certain points you'll see you can split into specializations. There's two other menus on this screen. One is special. This is coming soon. I'm not sure what this is. I assume this will be some sort of legendary characters that you can take into the battle with you. And finally the exploit, which as I said before, you earn exploit from PvP matches and this will unlock specialized equipment for you which you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. Once you've unlocked some armor or weapons for your character, it'll be moved into the storage section, which is what we're going to go over now. So on the storage screen, there is a lot to take in, but essentially what you'll get is all your equipment that you've unlocked on the right hand side of the screen. You can filter these into different categories as well as some different subcategories in case you want to find a specific type of item. On the left hand side of the screen, you're going to find what's equipped on you at the moment. First of all, you have your armor. You get four slots and a slot for your horse. Items are broken down into four classes of defense. You have cloth defense, leather defense, metal defense, and range defense. As you can see on the menu, each type of armor has its strengths and weaknesses against different forms of damage. So choosing your weapon and your armor correctly in a fight is vital. Armor can have combinations of different types of defense so you can be protected against multiple types of weapons. On the right side you can see the weapon slots. You can carry four weapons into a battle with you giving you a nice variety of different types of damage you can use but if you were going to be using a shield for example to use a shield and sword combo like I do that shield will take up a weapon slot so that will reduce the amount of types of weapons you can carry with you. Now the weapons are broken up into slashing, crushing and piercing damage. They've got a number of different stats including attack speed, length of the weapon, the amount of damage it does with a backswing, how much it breaks a shield, how much it weighs. As you can see they put a lot of effort into recreating real life weapons so each of the weapons has different lengths, you can attack from different angles. So for example a spear you can't really swipe with a spear, you can only prod with a spear, with a sword you're only able to slash side to side, that kind of thing. There's a lot there to play with and micromanage and you can really build your character to what kind of fighting style you're going to go for. Down at the bottom of the screen under your character you can see your item slots. These are active items that you can take into battle and they'll give you different benefits. So for example I have a horse flute which will summon a horse in case my steed dies. Shadow! Shadow no! No! I forgot about this. Nice! A bandage and fire arrows. Just next to this, you'll find your overall stats for you and your horse. At the top of the storage screen, you can see a few more tabs. You have the horse tab. This is where you're going to be able to equip different armor and things for your horse. I have none at the moment. And then finally, decoration. This is for cosmetic items which you can buy for the gold. These don't add any sort of statistical benefits, so there's nothing to worry about in pay to win in this area. Once you've built up your little stockpile a bit and you've got a lot of armor and weapons, you might have a number of different sets of outfits that you're going to be wearing. Depending on the circumstance. Next up we have the market. In the market tab you'll find any cosmetic items as well as active items like the bandage and the flute. You're also going to find any weapons or armor that you've unlocked for your troops that you haven't purchased for yourself yet. Next up we're going to look at your lieutenants. You're going to find these on the adjutant page. Your lieutenants are the guys who are going to be controlling your troops. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, they get skills and formations. This will allow them to mobilize your troops into certain formations which will help their battle strategy. These formations can drastically change the effectiveness of your troops in battle, so pick your lieutenants wisely. Once you've selected your faction and you've outfitted them with the gear that you'd like, upgraded them with any abilities that you'd like to give them, you can select them as your main force. This will just mean they pop up on the bottom of the screen so they'll be a lot easier to pick out from the rest of the troops. So what I'll do is I'll just work my way around the troop card so you can see what each of the things means. If you hover your mouse cursor over the troop, you'll get a breakdown of what they're good at, what they're not good at and what their skills are. If you right click on any of the troops, you'll get a sub menu which is a shortcut menu. If you click on details, It'll give you an in-depth breakdown of all of their stats, 
their skills, what bonuses they get when they're on full morale, and any equipment that they're wearing. On the bottom left of the card, you can actually bind the troops to gear sets. So if you have a certain archer gear set and an archer set of troops, you can actually set it up so when you use that gear set, that is the troop that will come with you. Above that, you can also assign them a lieutenant. The lieutenants will then automatically come with you into battle when you select those soldiers. It'll tell you if there's any benefits that they can get, so at the moment they're getting double rewards on the first daily victory. On the top right hand corner, if you hover over this symbol, it will let you know what type of infantry they are. It'll also give you the level of the troop, as well as what faction they're from. You can see the bar on the bottom left saying that it is my main force, and then finally the name of the soldiers on the bottom. Again, which seems to be quite a theme in this game, you can filter your troops, so you can say whether you'd like your main force, all of them, or your non-main force. You can say whether you'd like infantry, crossbow, cavalry. You can choose to filter them by what faction they're from, or what level they are. Finally on the right hand side, conscribe auto. This is if you lose troops in battle, it will automatically replenish the troops for you and you don't have to do it manually. Underneath this is to add more slots for more troops, but if you'd like to do this, this will cost you gold, which is what you get from the in-game store. So now that you've chosen and upgraded your troops, you've equipped your character with everything you want, and you've selected your lieutenant, it's now time to go into a fight. First of all, you're going to start off at level 1 with just one game type, which is the Conquest game type. This is a 5v5 team game, two teams of five. The objective is to kill the enemy marshal or wipe the enemy team. First of all, what you'll do is you'll choose a point to spawn in. You can scroll out to get a better view of the map. There's camps located all over the map. At the centre, you'll find one camp, which you'll be fighting over, and then there's a number of camps on each side of the map for you to pick up. These can be anything like healing camps or troop camps, which can give you extra troops or more health. You want to get one life in this map. So if you do get into a fight and you lose, but you survive the conflict, you can always retreat to some of the camps that you own to get more troops and to heal yourself up. You'll notice at the top it says single player and team game. Team game gets unlocked at level 5 and basically it's just the same game but a case of you can compose your team with your friends so you can make a more balanced team. The next type of game mode that you're going to unlock is Epic War. This is the PvE mode, so you get 5 players working together against NPCs. You get team objectives, you've got to take over and siege a castle, as well as take out 5 generals 1v1 at the start of the round. Once you reach level 8, you'll unlock the duel mode. This is a team deathmatch, first to 80 kills. It's a 12v12 game, there's no soldiers or lieutenants, it's simply the generals versus the generals. Once you reach level 15, you will be able to access the Siege Command Mode, which is essentially the same as Epic War, but instead of NPCs, you'll be fighting other players. At level 10, you actually unlock the Custom Game tab. From here, you can join or create rooms. You get a slightly bigger selection of dueling modes that you can choose from. You can choose a team deathmatch, a squad deathmatch, or a tag fight. Tag fights are incredibly fun. It's a team of generals versus another team of generals. You fight one on one to the death, the winner stays on. Last team standing is the winner. Whoa! Thanks for watching guys, I hope that helped out a little bit. If you enjoyed the guide, please don't forget to like and share the video. I'll be bringing out a more detailed guide to combat and troops in the near future, so keep your eyes open for that.